Hey everybody, Steph here. How many hours of coding should you do every day? What's the optimum? Well, from my experience, it's about four. Yep, four. Now I'm talking hardcore, serious coding. I find if you do more than four a day, your productivity just drops like a stone. So my suggestion to you is that you spend four hours a day in pure coding where you're deep into it and then the rest of your time planning, lightweight work, answering emails, and light, lightweight planning for the next day, maybe long-term planning, uh, you know, stuff like that. This is uh, a rule actually in terms of, uh, not a rule, but it's something that we've dis that psychologists or psychology or science has discovered years and years ago. I remember back when I was in university, my major was psychology. And I remember that, I remember, when I was looking at optimum study times, and I remember it was like three to four hours because they found that after that, uh, the brain just doesn't have the capacity to, uh, in terms of retention, in terms of remembering things. And it kind of makes sense. I remember when I got into coding, the same thing. I find my optimum coding time was about four hours a day, and you, you're very productive. You do more than that, you start making mistakes, you slow down, there's no point to it. And I, in, fact, uh, in fact, I was talking to a coder friend of mine who's a CTO of a, uh, of a company that uh, is backed by VCs, a startup, and uh, he, was, he was reading an article from a highly experienced coder who said the same thing. This is, this is something you learn with time. So my recommendation to you is when you are coding, I, you know, don't try not to do much more than three, four hours a day of hardcore stuff, and the rest do some light planning and stuff for maybe the next day or take care of emails or something that you need to do. This, is, uh, this will allow your mind enough time to rest and relax so you can be more productive again, highly productive again, the following day. Since this was such a short video, I'm gonna jump into something else. There's this whole, um, not this whole, when you're developing an app, it's inevitable that the code gets messed up. And sometimes the code gets so messed up because you want to make deadlines, you're moving quick, you want to get the app out, which is good, which is good. And then you've got a bit of a messy code base. So the inclination at this point is to trash the old code base and to rebuild from scratch. And it just feels good to know this code base is terrible. But you know what I found over the years? I found that this is, never works very well because you're going to just replacing one set of bugs with another set of bugs. Then people will argue, well, yeah, but you know, the old app is so badly written, it takes 10 hours to uh, make any changes. Yeah, that could be the case. So the key to this is refactoring. Refactoring is the process of cleaning up your code. So you start slowly refactoring your code. You start seeing the problem areas, you identify it, and you start cleaning up those problem areas, one by one, one by one. So we recently had a, an issue with an older app, five years old, and we've had to constantly change its core functionality based on user response. And that's how app development really works in the real world. Nobody ever comes out with the perfect app up front and then has to change nothing. There's always major changes then. And so what we did, we just, you know, built on top, refactored. So uh, and it's just, just cleaning it up, cleaning it up. We've cleaned up quite a bit. There's still more to do, but one of the ways you clean it up, and I talked about this in another video, is you use microservices. You see, most apps are just writing to the database and reading from the database, and you massage the code, you massage the input, the data rather, in between those processes. Writing to the database, massage the code, pull the code out, massage the code, generate a chart, send out an email, who knows. So what you can do is you can create microservices to uh, bypass some really garbage code and then, and then you know, just do it that way. So you, you, you start calling microservices from your old crappy app using the, your nice shiny new microservice instead. And then slowly, slowly you can retire, replace uh, components of your old app that's crappy with uh, nice shiny micro, microservices. This way, you, uh, you can still uh, keep what's good about the old app without having to reintroduce introduce rather new bugs if, if you decide to do it from scratch. Because I've, I've tried that, by the way. I've tried rewriting from scratch, and it's always that. It's always replacing old bugs for new. It, it's just the way it is. Yeah, it might be a little bit better, but you're better off take a working app, 
and just slowly replace components of your working app. You know, replace, replace something, okay, it works cool, that's good, all right, then replace the next thing, that's cool, that's all right. And that's how you, I would recommend, from my experience, you should uh, build your apps. Don't rewrite from scratch. That's just, it doesn't work out the way you think it will. All right, that's it for today.